Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a week in my teacher life. I have not done one of these videos in quite some time and I am excited to jump right in. This is essentially our first full week of school, but it's actually not a full week. It's a four day week because of the Labor Day weekend that just passed. So it's our second week but we started with two days and now we have four days so it's kind of nice because it's like a slow progression into the school year anyway i have been like getting to school it's day three so like i don't need a round of applause or anything but i have been getting to school earlier than usually like i'm just on the ball in the mornings so hopefully we can stick with that I will say though, I think I only got something like three hours of sleep last night. I had the hardest time falling asleep and I'm watching like a really good show on Netflix, which doesn't help. So at one point I was just like, okay, Jocelyn, you gotta turn this off. Like we cannot just not sleep before a week of school. Anyway, no matter what, it takes long like to get back into routine after kind of waking up and going to bed whenever I want all summer. And then on top of it, like having a long weekend, I think I maybe should have gone to bed earlier and like not slept in so much. I slept in pretty late yesterday. I woke up at eight and like we let the dog out and everything and then just like went back to sleep till 10.30, which is very abnormal. I don't sleep till 10.30 anymore. So anyway, obviously I needed it and it was nice, but it's kind of nice getting to school early. I hope the lighting's not weird. Like the sun is beaming into my classroom right now, but I do not want to complain because soon it's going to be like winter and the sun doesn't even come into the classroom then. I went to um, Winners on the weekend and grabbed a few new essential oils for my classroom. I need to get a new diffuser. My diffuser is like on its last legs, like not working very well. I was actually thinking about getting like a rechargeable one instead of an electric one and that way I could put it more so like in the middle of the room. Right now I have it behind me over in that corner um, which is really nice because the door and when people come in they smell it and when I smell it around my space but I like it when it has like more of an effect on the whole classroom and I don't put like a lot of scent in just kind of like a hint. Anyway, this little package is by Woolsey's, which is like my favorite brand to get. Um, and it's just available at Winners, which is nice. So you save money. Um, but I got the Work Buddy brand, which is super cute. Or the Work Buddy pack. So there's After Hours, Creative Genius, and 9 to 5 Energy. And I really liked... I think it's specifically Creative Genius, but I actually also really like 9 to 5 Energy. After Hours is like a little bit perhaps too chill for like first thing in the morning, but I think I might start with 9 to 5 Energy. I also got a new thing of lemon essential oil. If you don't know this trick, lemon essential oil is really good for getting off like any sort of like stickiness or like residue. Um, so I use it quite often. Um, at home and in my classroom, um, but I was out of it. Anyway, that was a slight side note. <laughs> um, I am excited to be doing a week in my life vlog. Like I said, I haven't really done this in a really long time um, and I'm not really sure what to expect. We're still kind of in that phase um, at the beginning of the year, obviously, when like the supervision schedule isn't like laid out perfectly and we spend more time in our classrooms, like preparing our kids for certain things and just little things like that. I feel like everything just takes a little bit longer in the beginning of the year and that's okay, but that's just where we're at right now. Um, so I don't necessarily have as many breaks as I will once we get rocking and rolling. And I still do have my sweet puppy at home. So I do try to check on him at least once a day in like free time that I have, whether that be a prep or lunchtime. Lunchtime is better because then I can just jet home and um, I know my kids are supervised and I don't really need to get any work done during lunch. I just don't eat instead. <laughs> so that's really good. Um, unfortunately, there was like a massive fire in the neighborhood next to mine last week on Friday, actually Friday afternoon. And it was just, it's just terrifying. Um, three houses were completely destroyed and it was about a kilometer away from my house and we could see it from the school windows not necessarily the fire but the smoke and it's just terrifying to think um 
And I'm sure those families had the same thoughts and my heart absolutely goes out to anyone whose life was impacted by the fire. But I know I was just like panicking when my kids told me that they saw smoke because I know you can see my neighborhood from the school. And I was just so panicked thinking of Summit at home and what it would be like with a fire. So I actually went on Etsy and I ordered um, these little like stickers that you put on your door that just say like in case of an emergency, like we have a dog. Um, because my biggest fear is like him just inside in a crate and something happening and he has no way of getting out. So like, oh, I can't even, I can't even imagine. Um, so I had, I had a harder time leaving him this morning than I would say I normally do. I am a mess no matter what. I'm like the worst dog mom, but uh, my heart, like I just, I can't imagine. I truly can't imagine. Anyway. I am going to get started with a few things this morning. My kids just still don't come in for about half an hour, so I need to get the schedule up, change the date, and I'm going to print off some labels so that we can start our day by labeling their duotangs and organizing their binders. And that way, like anything we do actually has a place to go because right now we just don't have that kind of organization. So I figured we would start with that. Um, and then I have a prep at 10 o'clock and at that point I'm going to get my forms made up that can go home with them, like the getting to know your child forms. Um, so I can share those with you later once I get that done. I just want to make a few changes every year, something else kind of comes up. And yeah, so just kind of going to be a little bit of a morning of organization. I have a few kids who are going to be here for the first time. and. I just still like to give them the opportunity to socialize and get to know one another and just get back into the routine. So I would imagine my next opportunity to check in with you today will probably be after school. Um, but if I do have the chance to pick up the camera, the week will kind of be like that. Whenever I have the chance, I'll pick it up, give you a little update, show you what we're doing in grade six this week. And I'm happy to have you along for this week in my teacher life as we get back into the school year. Hi everyone, what's up? Happy Wednesday. It is lunchtime on Wednesday and I don't actually have that much to share with you. This is like the first time, sorry, my hair is wild. Um, this is the first time that I've been able to catch up with you. Yesterday was wild. Like I just felt like I didn't breathe all day and I slept so well last night because I was ready for bed. Anyway, it's just been a little bit crazy. I would say mostly like mentally for me so far because I just feel very unnatural like teaching at this level. Even though I taught grade five, it's really about the curriculum, right? So with subjects like science and social, for example, having to really relearn all of the topics and obviously I'm taking it like one by one. So right now we're starting with um, air flight and aerodynamics in science. And we are going to work on democracy to start in social because everything kind of relates back to democracy. So I'm starting with those two things and I'm just still in that uncomfortable phase of like not really knowing how I want to begin the unit, how I want to address things and where I'm going. I'm really trying to like begin with the end in mind. So I totally know like where they need to be by the end, but it's just getting them there is kind of awkward when you're teaching a grade for the first time. And I know I'll get into the swing of things, so I'm not letting it get me down, but I'm just kind of longing for like that understanding that I had in grade five of the curriculum. Anyway, it'll come, it'll be fine. Um, yesterday we started those units though. So for air flight and aerodynamics, um, I chatted with the t teachers who taught grade six last year and they told me to just start like with the general concept of air and making sure that the kids have an understanding that air is a fluid and the fact that air flows, it fits the shape of a container. Um, it's just kind of, I guess, like an abstract concept because we can't see air. So we are going to do an experiment probably tomorrow that kind of shows that. Um, but for right now, I'm just trying to get like the general concept of air. So yesterday was kind of fun because I said, when you think about explaining the concept of air to someone, what would you say? And it's one of those words that's really difficult to explain without saying the word air. So we actually brainstormed like a massive list 
um, of things that we think of when we think of air. So I just typed on the smart board and I accepted any answer. Um, what do you think of when you think of air? Or what does air make you think of? What's related to air? What's a connection you can make to air? Like very general, um, just to get a sense. And I actually had a student said that say that air flows. And I had another student say that it takes up space. So those were two great ideas that are gonna kind of like kind of send us forward today. So I put stars next to those two ideas and said kind of hang on to these. We're gonna chat about them more tomorrow. And then in social, to start talking about democracy, I actually had them get in groups. I've been doing like fun ways of getting them in groups right now. So I had them get in groups. Um, it was based on height, I believe yesterday. And they had to come up in their group with five laws for our classroom and the laws could not use the word no, which I, it was kind of funny because I was trying to say, don't use the word no. So that like, for example, instead of saying no hitting, you would write like treat others with respect or with kindness. Um, but it was funny because I said, don't use the word no, but the amount of kids in my class who use the word not, like do not or don't was hilarious. I like burst out laughing when they handed their sheets in and I just thought it was funny that like in my mind, when I said, don't say no, that was enough instruction, but it absolutely wasn't. I was like, you guys are right. Like I didn't say, don't say not. Um, anyway, <laughs> but we can reframe those as we talk today. So it'll be fine. But I wanted to start with that. And then I'm going to kind of show some of the differences. So today I thought we would take those laws and we would like co-construct the laws of our classroom. So finding similar ideas, connections between ideas that the kids came up with, and then coming up with like the five laws of our classroom and talk about how we all work together to come up with those. And it also kind of hits the like classroom contract kind of aspect. And I'm also going to kind of show the opposite. So throughout this week, I also want to show like, oh, here's a situation where I'm going to be the only one who makes the choice just because it's what I feel like. So I kind of want to give them just different perspectives on like choice. And I know that democracy isn't always like just about choice. But in this case, I wanted to show them like, oh, here's a chance where we're all gonna work together to come up with something. Here's another opportunity where I'm gonna make the decision. And I'm hoping to kind of weave this. I don't know, again, like I'm a little bit uncomfortable with where I'm at, but I do feel like I have a good like concept. Um, I was like kind of throwing around the idea of like a classroom election, but I don't love that. So I don't think we're gonna do that. I wish it was like an election year cause that would be really cool to teach democracy. Anyway, I feel like I'm just kind of blabbing at this point. I will continue to share where I'm at. A lot of the time it is just gonna be like a little bit helpless, a little bit confused, but it'll be fine. Anyway, I have a staff meeting after school today. So I know that I'll be staying a little bit late and won't have the chance to pick up the camera. Um, but I will likely be able to touch base with you tomorrow morning, I'm going to say. And hopefully I can give you a few more ideas and things that we've been up to. And yeah, thanks for being here and seeing my struggle as we, you know, try to get our footing here at the beginning of the year. Good morning, guys. Hello. What is up? Happy Thursday. I just got to school. It's a bit of a gloomy morning, so I feel like I'm kind of feeling that like emotionally this morning too. I'm just tired. Anyway, I have a little bit of time before the kids get here, so I'm gonna sip some coffee and just kind of get myself together. My puppy was really upset this morning too with me leaving and my husband had to leave for work at like 6.30. Like it's just this whole thing. So there's just a lot going on right now and a lot to process. And I feel like that definitely came out in what I was chatting with you about yesterday. I was watching my footage and I'm like, oh, I just seem like the most unconfident teacher. And that's not even it. Like I'm quite confident in myself and like my abilities and the way I can be in front of the class. It's really just the content that's getting me. Anyway, I have great plans today, um, especially in science we're going to do not really like an experiment, more of a demonstration. So I will perhaps even show that to you later. Anyway, I'll at least explain it to you later and let you know how it goes. Um, 
it's just talking about how air is fluid. Anyway, so I am excited to do that because one of the things I told the kids about choosing air flight and aerodynamics as our first unit was that I felt like it could be more hands-on, which would just be a little bit more engaging for the beginning of the year. So I do wanna start with like some experiments, demonstrations, that kind of thing right off the bat to prove that I was telling the truth. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, a couple other things that I grabbed that I just kind of wanted to show you this morning. So the first was this form that I think I told you about on Tuesday. And I send this home with students every year. I created this myself because there are plenty of like getting to know you forms available on Teachers Pay Teachers or online, but you kind of need to determine what information you need to know from families yourself as a teacher. So I did create this myself. I edited it this year just because I do know my students so well, um, but I will read you the questions, the statements that I ask for from parents. So child's name, preferred name or nicknames, three words to describe your child, your child's hobbies or interests, what your child is best at or what makes him or her shine. Um, in what areas would you like to see your child improve this year? What motivates your child to be successful? I ask for the child's siblings, names and ages. I always ask for names um, particularly so that I know how to spell them. So moving forward, if a child asks me how to spell their sibling's name, which does happen more than you would think. Um, and just to know about family dynamics. Um, allergies or medical concerns. I ask for the child's current living situation. And then I give a section like any special information I should know, like recent changes. Um, some parents also like request a phone call in this section um, so we can chat further, which is great. Um, the parent or guardian names and their relationship to the child. And then it's all like contact information on the back. So phone numbers, emails, um, I ask the best way to get in touch with them. Um, that kind of thing. So I have it all in that form and I keep those forms for the whole year. I usually have my students also fill out a form um, with some of their favorites, like favorite color, favorite chocolate bar, like some of those kinds of things. Um, I just haven't done that yet. This is something that I'm hoping to get done today. I got this for free on Teachers Pay Teachers from Art with Jenny K. And I have used this, I think this is my fourth year, and it's a collaborative Canadian flag. So if you're a Canadian teacher, it's such a cool way to get a flag up in your classroom. So what um, this teacher has done, or this creator has done, is they have like created the Canadian flag, but it's massive, it's really, really big, but they've cut it up and then labeled the parts that need to be colored. So you pass them out to your students. There's something like 26 um, or 28 sections. You pass them out to your students, they color the sections they're supposed to, obviously leave some sections white, um, and then you glue it all together and put it all together. I usually laminate it and then hang it up for the whole year. So I do have a blank space over on the wall in my classroom that is waiting for our collaborative Canadian flag. And then it's just something you've created, but it's also really good to have a flag up in your classroom um, to show pride in your country. So it's cool to create it together. I also wanted to ask a question. So when TPT was having their sale, like last week, they had like a surprise back to school sale or something. I bought two packages that I had had in my cart for quite some time or like on my wish list for quite some time. And they're from the store Hello Fifth. And one is a math wall with interactive equations. I don't wanna show you the package um, out of respect, but I will show you the cover. And then the other is an interactive language wall. This is the one that I've had like in my on my wish list or in my cart for I think a couple of years <laughs> to be honest, which is hilarious. But then I saw this one too because now that I'm teaching grade six, I know that they're gonna be writing their PATs, their provincial exams at the end of the year. And one of the things that I hear over and over is that it's it's like, the kids don't know what the question is asking them on in some regard. So if they read the question, but they don't really know what it's asking them, they end up getting the wrong answer for that reason, which really comes back to like vocabulary and comprehension. So I'm trying to think of ways that I can incorporate more specific vocabulary study in my classroom that are for like words that perhaps the kids should already know, but reviewing those words and then also ensuring that they have the vocabulary they need to be successful on the PAT. So if I'm looking at the math one, for example, 
some of the words that I know kids have trouble with, like we were doing something yesterday and I had some students who didn't know what some meant. And you know, it came to them after a while, but originally looking at the word some, they're like, I don't know what it's asking me. And like, that's a massive problem because my kids can obviously add. So if they knew what some meant, like the problem would be done like that. But because they didn't know what the question was asking them, it was a problem. And same thing with when you're teaching um, like multiplication and division and you're trying to use like quotient, dividend. Um, I know we're going to get into a little bit of like um, bed mass this year. So making sure they know what um, exponents are, what brackets means, that kind of thing. So just those little words that you almost like assume kids know and then they don't and it can really mess them up. So I'm trying to think of how I want to use these in my classroom. If you have either of these packages or you have created something very similar, I would love to hear how you use it in your classroom. I think I need to kind of just take them home, kind of break the packages apart a little bit. I printed them because I just work better when I have it printed and can like lay it out in front of me, decide what I need, what I will not need in grade six and what is going to be kind of relevant. I really like the ideas of like writing sentences on the board and then having the kids um, like label the parts of a sentence and that kind of thing because I do want them to become strong sentence writers. And then I think for things like I had said with, with teaching bed mass this year, um, making sure that they know what each of those letters stands for in the acronym and then once they know that, the order will come more naturally. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, I'm I'm just processing right now. I, I love both packages. I'm glad I pulled the trigger and bought them, but I'm not, I'm a little bit overwhelmed thinking about how to use them, but I do want to get started. Like there's things you want to like incorporate into your routine right away. So I do want to get started with them sooner rather than later. Anyway, I am feeling a lot better actually just today compared to yesterday. I feel like when I was talking to you yesterday, I was stressed about teaching and I had a really good afternoon yesterday in the end. Um, our staff meeting ran kind of late and <laughs> anyway, chaos in the evenings, but you can't control those things. Um, but I had a good afternoon of teaching. It was a little bit chaotic in here, a little bit noisy, but that's okay. Um, we got through a lot of content. So I'm really trying to stay on track this year. That's my biggest goal is to like really stay on track with the content to make sure that I get through everything that I need to get through. Um, and that's important to me. So starting this week and trying to start off strong, like I think that's why I'm so stressed about it is like I want to do a good job with it. Anyway, that is that. So I am going to get a few things organized for the day. And I would imagine I will be able to chat with you after school. I have like a lot going on today. We've got gym, French, music, like it's a whole day. Um, but there is just stuff kind of all the time and things that I'm trying to get done and like meetings and you know, you know, back to school life. Anyway, preaching to the choir here, but I will try to touch base with you maybe after school. I also have cross country practice after school that I was just forgetting about in that moment. So you might not hear from me until tomorrow morning, but that would be okay. Um, thank you for being here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Hi everyone, we made it to Friday officially. It is first recess right now. So my kids are outside playing. It's relatively chilly today, but it's still warm in the classroom. So it's one of those like weird sensations where I'm cold and like hot at the same time. So if you're wondering why my cheeks are red, it's just from like being in the classroom. It's just warm in here. Anyway, uh, I really wanna tell you about my lesson yesterday because it was probably one of my best like teaching moments that I've ever had, <laughs> but I'm like not in the mood to tell you the story because I just had a teaching moment that like did not go over very well or like an, a lesson idea. Anyway, I'm gonna try to focus on yesterday because I was so excited to tell you, but I had cross country practice after school so I didn't get to um, touch base. So anyway, I don't know if I had mentioned previous to this, but in social studies, um, a, one of our like general themes in grade six is democracy. And so, um, I really wanted to start the year with a good understanding of what democracy means. And we're going to be talking a lot about government and decision making and that kind of thing. So I really wanted to show the difference between, to begin with, between a democratic government or situation and what something like a dictatorship would look like. 
So I decided that because at the beginning of the year anyway, you want to talk about like classroom rules, I decided to call them our classroom laws instead. And we worked really collaboratively for three days to make classroom laws. So in the beginning, I had them join groups and in their group, they had to come up with five laws. If we could only have five laws, rules in our classroom, what would those rules be? and they weren't allowed to use the word no. I, I did talk about this, I think, with you. Anyway, the next day we, we put, um, we cut out the rules and we put all the strips on the whiteboard. And then we organized the strips into categories and we voted on the most important categories. We put them together and we pretty much came up with five rules. So these were like our five ultimate laws. So then I got on my computer on the smart board and we typed them out and we voted on how we wanted them to be worded. It was very collaborative, like people were able to give their feedback, give their ideas, and that was awesome. Anyway, they asked if we could print them out on a scroll. So I went on Canva and found this scroll image and I printed our, we ended up coming up with six collaboratively. I put six, our six classroom laws and I blew it up on a big paper and I put it over on my locker, like the doorway area. Anyway, with all of this in mind, my plan was to really show the opposite. So show what something would look like if we didn't collaboratively work on the work on the laws and if I just did it. So I decided to kind of be a dramatic person for a few minutes to really get the point across. So yesterday, randomly yesterday afternoon, I went over and I was like, you know what, that's it. And I grabbed the laws off the wall and I ripped them up and threw them in the garbage. And I said, we had talked about like showing respect and being kind and using our manners. And I was being super dramatic, overly dramatic. And I was like, but are you guys doing that? And they were like, no. Like, <laughs> so I instantly felt bad. I was having the hardest time not smiling. And I was like, exactly. And I was like, so you know what? Here's what's gonna happen from here on out. I'm in charge, I'm gonna make the laws and these are what they're gonna look like. Anyway, I knew that I wouldn't remember in the moment. So I had printed my new laws on a sheet, small sheet of paper and I had put them up by the whiteboard like secretly. So I grabbed a marker and I read the first law that I had and I was like, so our principal had talked to me yesterday about the fact that I could pass out Chromebooks today, but you know what? You guys don't deserve Chromebooks. So I wrote rule number one, no Chromebooks. And I said, and until you earn them, you won't get them and that maybe won't be in grade six. And then I said, okay, and then the second rule, and I went and switched markers to a different color so it could give me a chance to read the second rule. And I said, second rule is no talking unless you're called upon. I was like, you guys don't listen to me. You're talking to your friends the whole time. So our classroom will be silent. It is not gonna be a talking place. <laughs> and then I go and switch markers, read my next rule and it was about um, recess, like, and then I said, recess is a privilege. That means it can be taken away. So unless you do your work and you do it all and you do your very best work, you will not get recess. You can spend your recess with me. And then anyway, so on and so forth. Rule four was about gym and how um, gym will be taken away because we haven't done well on our basic facts. So instead of doing gym, we will do extra math. And then I know gym is like their passion. so. My next rule was also about gym. And I said, unless you get 100% on every test you do, you will not be allowed to go to gym. And I said, now these are what our rules are gonna be from here on out until you have earned my respect. Anyway, somehow I stayed in character the whole time. I never truly yelled. I just like used a mean voice, talked very sternly. I didn't smile somehow. And they are all like, it was the quietest I've ever seen them. They were all just sitting there staring at me and like everyone was looking at me. Nobody like connected eyes with anyone else. It was just like still staring at me. And so I knew I pulled it off. And so then I just stood there and I said, how did that make you feel? And like the, nobody knows what to say. So they all start looking at one another. They're saying sad. They're like, I think I'm gonna cry. One kid was like, I'm so mad. They were so, <laughs> and so then I smiled. I allowed myself to smile and I was like, it was a joke. And then they, wa they weren't sure how to act at all. Like they had no idea what I meant by like, it was a joke. So I quickly jumped in back into like teacher mode, explaining what I was talking about. I said, now we're talking about government. I was like, our first set of laws, 
everybody had a voice, everyone's opinion was heard. I was like, there was still leadership in that I led you or your group leader led you, but everybody got to be heard. We got to vote, we got to contribute our ideas. I said, that's a form of democracy. And I was like, now it wasn't a government that we were talking about, we were just forming laws but it shows what democracy looks like, what collaboration, everyone being heard, everyone being included. And we had we talked briefly about confederation and how last year we had talked about the fact that indigenous voices weren't heard, women weren't heard, um, lots of lower and middle class um, opinions were not able to be given, that kind of thing. So I related it to try to relate it back to grade five content. And then I said, does anyone know what this kind of government might be if I, if I was a type of government in the way that I was acting? And they kind of didn't know. They were like, so mean. And I was like, okay, yes, mean. But like, what is that? And they didn't know the word. So I said, have you ever heard of a dictatorship? And they were like, yes. And I said, okay, so a dictatorship is where one person or a small group of people forms like the entire government. Like it's just a leader or a small group of leaders. And often um, it's not the same kind of collaboration and everyone's voices are heard. It's like these people make the decisions. So if I were to form the laws like I did, today that would be a dictatorship so anyway we, we chatted for a little bit the lesson kind of went on and I said you know what like it was a joke but there was a purpose and they were asking me all these questions they're like how long have you had this planned and like you printed up those laws just to rip them up and anyway it was very dramatic but it was like probably the best lesson I've like ever had because it just went like exactly as I needed it to and at the end I was like are you guys ever gonna forget this and they were like no <laughs> and like teachers were coming up to me in the hallway after school they were like oh my gosh so and so came up and was like do you know the difference between democracy and a dictatorship and they were just passionate and like it really hit home with them and anytime you know that like a lesson like was just a home run and the kids really get it it's just the best feeling so I wanted to share that with you whether you can use it or not maybe you have you could do something similar with something you need to teach your students but getting into character and pulling it off was probably the best way I could think of teaching it and it just went well like in every way. So I was so impressed with myself and like those are just the best moments. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, I'm a little bit crunched for time. The bell's gonna ring in like one minute, but I should be able to catch up with you later today and um, update you on how some other things have been going. And yeah, I'll catch you then. Hi everybody, obviously it is not the same day. It is now the weekend. I was just at church and I figured I would stop by the school, do a quick outro to the vlog and print off a couple things for the week ahead. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, I edited the whole vlog and it's like ready to go, but it was just um, actually turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to, to me. Sometimes when I'm vlogging, it seems very PC and like it's not going to come together. <laughs> but this week I actually did okay for my first week back, like first full week of vlogging back to YouTube. So hopefully you got some ideas and you got some things. The one thing I did realize is that I didn't show my science experiment and I had really wanted to share that um, because I think it's applicable to like a variety of topics. So it's also super easy. All you need is like a glass. I just used a measuring cup. Um, you could also, I think, use like a plastic cup, but I use a glass cup just for like safety and then um, also so they can see through it. Um, you need just like some regular vinegar, um, a candle. I would say like if you have like a pillar candle to use for this, it would help all the kids to be able to see, but I just like held it up for my class because this is all I had on hand um, without bringing like a Bath and Body Works candle or something like that. Um, and then some baking soda. So what I was trying to represent in this experiment is that air is a fluid. Um, so we brainstormed at first, the kids had to like make a hypothesis if they thought air was fluid or not. I gave them the definition of fluid. Um, one of the goals is that I really want them to understand that liquid and fluid are not um, the exact same thing. Like they have different meanings. So that's really important in what I'm trying to get across. Um, and then also just the fact that air is a fluid because I know that it's going to come up a lot once we get into aerodynamics. 
this would also be a good experiment though like coming from my grade five perspective um if you are talking about states of matter um even just talking about gas in general and the characteristics or the properties of different states of matter um this is a good representation of like air taking the shape of its container um gases are always difficult to teach because you can't see them <laughs> and like you can't see air so anyway um i will quickly show this to you and then there are like a million videos of this on youtube by the way like this is not my <laughs> this is not something i came up with by any means um but it is a cool experiment um more of like a demonstration i guess that you can do with your kids so you also need a lighter um little like side note i have one of these like usb chargeable lighters and i brought this in because i'm just like mm, that's easy um and it makes like a little bit of like a piercing sound but like i don't notice it too much but it was at like a frequency where like it really bothered the kids ears so that was like a whole other experiment in and of itself anyway the first thing you need to do i didn't measure you can look up measurements but i don't think they're necessary you just put some baking soda into your glass like enough that like it's going to kind of have like a chemical reaction but not enough that it's gonna overflow <laughs> and then you want to I think you you can do whichever one first I like to light the candle in the next step okay and then pour your vinegar again not very much I don't measure though okay you're creating that chemical reaction you're gonna tell the kids that you're creating carbon dioxide then you just put your hand over the cup and you're telling the kids that you're trying to trap the carbon dioxide. So while the chemical reaction is kind of dying down, you're just holding in the air, which you know, they kind of giggle and laugh at you because holding in air is kind of funny um, in a cup. But later you, like this is a really good representation as well about like density because carbon dioxide weighs more than air, it sinks down. So it can't really come out of the cup because it's heavier or more dense. So then you gently take your hand off so as not to stir up the air. This is the point where like a pillar candle will come in handy, but I just held the candle up and you essentially pour the carbon dioxide on and the candle goes out. So super, super cool. You know, everyone goes, oh my goodness. Um, I guess not as cool with grade six. They were kind of like Camus Lloyd, like that took no time. Um, but it's something that we can now reference. Remember when we pour the air, um, so it got the concept across. Um, but again, this experiment is probably applicable to like a variety of topics and grades. So I did just wanna share that because I said I would, <laughs> I never got around to it, but also because perhaps you can use it in something that you have to teach this year. Anyway, that is going to bring this week's vlog to a close. It was a bit of a longer one, but usually when I vlog throughout the whole week, they tend to be a little bit longer and I can get chatty. Um, let me know in the comments. I would love some feedback. What are you looking for in vlogs? Like I would love to see genuinely what you watch teacher vlogs for because I know I kind of like a little bit of everything. I'm not too picky. Like I do love like the classroom setup. I love classroom tours. I love lessons, but I also just love the chattiness and like hearing about another teacher's experiences. And I think it makes it a little bit more relatable or easier to connect with people on here. But if you are looking for something specific or you just, you know, you like the way that I structure things already, can you leave me some feedback down below? Because I do kind of want to know how I should be structuring things and how things should be flowing on my channel this year, what my goals are. But I had a lot of fun vlogging this week and I am enjoying getting back into it. And I know it's going to be helpful even just for me to look back on in future years to see what I was teaching. Um, because once you kind of get it figured out, it's nice to be able to look back and get ideas from even yourself. <laughs> so that will be really nice. 
Anyway, I think I will likely film this week as well. Um, probably same kind of structure week in my life. And there are three more things I want to do in my classroom before I film my whole classroom tour. So I will get those done likely this week. We have Meet the Teacher coming up in a couple weeks. So I want to have everything done by then. And I feel like that's kind of a good goal to make sure. But there's things that like I co-create with my students or we make collaboratively. Um, or my students help me to make. So I want to wait until we get everything done and then I will get my classroom tour, but you can definitely expect that by October. I would say at some point in September, that will be my video. My goal this year is to release a video every single Sunday. So hold me accountable, obviously. Things get crazy, but that is my goal and I do feel like it is attainable. I feel like I can I can definitely get one video out to you every week and then if I do have extra content, I could release a bonus here and there, um, but my goal is once per week on Sundays. Thank you so much for staying tuned. I know this was a long one. There were some ups and downs emotionally with you know, figuring out grade six, but also having like my best lesson ever. <laughs> I don't know why I'm using like quotations when I genuinely feel like it might've been my best lesson ever. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for being here. If you did enjoy this week's video, please give it a thumbs up because it truly supports my channel. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on any future content and I will see you in my next one.